Oh yeah, I'm Ed Diamond. I'm 42 years old and the director of a company called Bright Bricks. Um, the reason I decided to become part of the company was that I was already a fan of Lego. I started um, in childhood like most Lego people. When I got to adulthood, after I'd been to university, I, I discovered that there were adult fans of Lego out there in the world. Um, joined a thing called the British Association, which is the adult fan club for Lego builders in the UK. Uh, and that's where I met my business partner. He'd, he'd started to do some small commission builds. Um, went off for a meeting in the States, came back and said, Ed, this is, you know, this is really going to take off. Um, do you want to join me? And I said, yeah, okay. Uh, and three months later, that was it. I jacked in my job and we were, we were away full-time building. Uh, the clientele that come to us are hugely variable. Uh, we do quite a lot of work for companies on an industrial sort of background, so the oil industry from aviation and so on, because clearly they have products and machinery and things that could be represented in Lego. But equally well, we'll get companies that um, are more brand related, so we'll do a mosaic of their brand or have um, something that represents their company or their ethos in there. Um, yes, beyond the commissions we do, we do actually do quite a lot of uh, events with the public so that they'll actually come along and we'll have things on display but also have uh, as much interactivity as possible because the whole point of LEGO is people like to play with it. So we'll do a lot of public build mosaics which essentially is we can take any image, blow it up to any size. Uh, the biggest one that we did of those was a million piece map of the world on the South Bank in London that took three and a half thousand con contributors to complete. We also do do uh, large scale model builds where we're taking a small model and scaling it up four or five or six times. So each individual person gets to build basically a fairly simple copy of a brick by taking normal bricks, adding them together, that makes a larger brick. We then put those onto the model. That enables us to build really big models but where we're not actually having to do a lot of the labour. So we can do something where we'll maybe put three or four thousand large bricks on the model but you'll end up with maybe a quarter of a million bricks in the finished thing and you can create a much bigger model than we'd ever be able to for the same sort of budget. Uh, when we're doing builds we tend to have a fair bit of planning involved in them but as to what that entails it depends a great deal on the individual build so a lot of the time it's fairly freeform building we'll work out the scale the size we've done that sort of part of the costing regime but then it'll just be sitting down with a pile of bricks and, and getting on with it. For certain builds, if it's a fairly three-dimensional sculptural shape like a tiger or a lion, a cat, a dog, we can run that through a piece of software we have that will actually take a 3D model of the, of the animal and actually convert it into sort of layers so that we can build it layer by layer. Um, the largest thing we ever built was a giant Lego Christmas tree that was 12 metres tall, used nearly 700,000 bricks, weighed around three tonnes, including all the steelwork holding it up. Um, among the more interesting things, the Lego jet engine for Rolls-Royce, which was a sort of fully working half-scale model of a jet engine, all sorts of moving parts and so on. And then from a, a sort of collective interest point of view, the, the current project we've just uh, installed at Milestones Museum, the Lego Lost World Zoo, uh, there's 120 different models from about 40 different species, anything from woolly mammoth, saber-toothed cats, giant dragonflies, prehistoric creatures. It's a, a huge range of things, so that was quite interesting from the variety of stuff that we got to build. Uh, do I have a dream build? Um, there's so many things that you could possibly build that it's almost impossible to say. Um, the one that Duncan and I have always talked about, uh, because it would probably end up being the world's largest Lego model, would be to build a full-size, one-to-one scale model of a London Routemaster bus, the traditional big red bus, um, you know, with floors in and everything, and even put it on a rolling chassis so we can actually move around and then go park it on Oxford Street and watch all the people walk past and go, <gasps> it's a Lego bus. So that, I think that would be good fun. Um, do I enjoy what I do? I'd have to say I do. Uh, I do enjoy it a lot. Uh, I was always a Lego fan as a child. Um, I, I sort of dreamt in childhood of becoming a professional Lego artist in my uh, older years, maybe going off to work for Legoland or do something like that. Um, it took me 15 years of working ordinary jobs before I actually got the opportunity to, to do it, but now I have. I, I hope to carry on doing it until I retire. The future for Bright Bricks I think will involve 
trying to diversify what we do. At the moment we do an awful lot of commission builds, but we're looking to do things like touring shows, so we actually put a whole Lego show together and tour it around museums around the country, around the world. Um, we're looking at opening up a shop within our workshop so people can come along and actually sort of have an experience of going around a Lego workshop, working with the experts, getting to build your own models and take them home, those sorts of things, um, and we're kind of expanding our children's party business. So we're, we're trying to look at any number of different ways of actually using Lego bricks to give people enjoyment and to create more business for ourselves.